Look at the new Ipsos poll that came out today. That finds a robust majority of Republican voters nationwide, 53 percent of Republican voters in America believe that right now, Donald Trump is currently the lawful president of the United States. And Joe Biden is therefore an illegal usurper occupying the White House, even though he lost the 2020 election to Trump. A majority of Republicans already believe that. Where does this go as they now start to uncount the election from 2020 and invent theories and explanations and wild tales about what happened to the voting machines and what happened to the ballots that mean that the 2020 election shouldn't be counted? I mean, the way it worked in Samoa is that they didn't storm the Capitol. They just locked out the incoming prime minister elect. They just locked the door. So their equivalent of an inauguration couldn't happen. The court intervened. They ignored the court. And so now it's a coup. If you do not obey court rulings and you do not respect election results, you just hold on by force. That's a coup. And it's a question of how long everybody holds their temper right now in Samoa and tries to talk this out. How long before some further kind of force beyond just a locked door is brought to bear here? And I hope that does not happen. But, you know, we've already shown here that force is not going to be a big threshold issue for us. Force is not going to be a problem for the side that's refusing to concede in our election. Again, though, sometimes it's harder for us to see this stuff up close than when it's far away. Uh, in another direction, but also far away, Belarus, the guy in charge there has been in power for 26 years. Belarus used to be part of the Soviet Union. It's only had a president since 1994. This same man has been in that job, has been president there since they established the office of president 26 years ago. He's the only president uh, an independent Belarus has ever known. Alexander Lukashenko is sort of joined at the hip with Russian President Vladimir Putin. They've talked about joining their two countries together. Hasn't happened yet, but could any moment. Lukashenko is frequently called Europe's last dictator. I honestly don't like to say that because it feels like a jinx to me. I mean, depending on how things are going, sure, he is a dictator there now for sure. But what do, why, why do we think he's going to be the last? Don't jinx it. Authoritarianism is kind of having a moment. Dictatorships kind of feel like they're on their way back. Why do we think he'll be the last one in Europe? That said, the people of Belarus seem like they're kind of done with him. In August, as we were gearing up for our own presidential election last year, Lukashenko was facing his, the version of elections that he allows. And he had done what all good dictators do. He had, for example, thrown into prison the most promising opposition candidate who was running against him. What he didn't expect, I think, was that that candidate's wife, a teacher who had never been involved in politics before, she took up the banner uh, and, and ran for president in her husband's place while her husband was in prison. And citizens of Belarus went to the polls in August, and it kind of seems like she might have won and so how does a dictator respond to that? The elections aren't supposed to be real. They're supposed to be just for show. Lukashenko not only declared victory for himself, he declared it was a landslide, overwhelming victory, which everybody knew was not true. And people turned out in the streets by at least the hundreds of thousands, if not the millions, protesting. The biggest protests ever in Belarus, protesting against the infinite dictatorship they were stuck in protesting against the false democracy they were told to play act in, where there was no objectively observable result. And so if he says he won, then OK, I guess he won. Millions of people protested. Tens of thousands of people were arrested. Some died in custody. Hundreds of people made credible allegations of torture by police in custody. They would air videos like this of forced confessions by people showing the signs of being beaten. Uh, the woman holding up this photo here, this is the one who ran against Lukashenko in August. And what she's holding up here is a photo of somebody who was beaten very badly uh, after being arrested for taking part in those protests. I should tell you that the candidate, she's in exile now. She's been forced out of Belarus. She has to live in Lithuania. All the opposition leaders, all the protest organizers have all been arrested or chased out of the country since the election that it looks like she won against Lukashenko. But put up that previous picture again, though. Look at what she's holding up there. You see, obviously, the, 
very injured photos of the, the photo of the very injured man. I know that's hard to see, but do you see how the photo is watermarked? It has words written on it in a pattern on the diagonal. I initially thought those were like tattoos or something on the guy who was beaten, but it's not. It's a it's a media outlet watermark. The word there is nexta, N-E-X-T-A. Nexta is an opposition media outlet in Belarus that has only been able to survive because its leadership has also fled the country. Its editor, who is also in exile in Lithuania, he's all 26 years old. He was officially designated by Lukashenko as a terrorist in November. Designated a terrorist for running a media outlet that had the temerity to report on the protests against that country's dictator. Media outlet that published photos like that one of how people were abused by the police after they were arrested. Well, this weekend, the dictator in Belarus, Lukashenko, sent up a fighter jet, sent up a MiG fighter jet to intercept a commercial passenger plane that had taken off from Greece and was flying to Lithuania. Those are two EU countries. It was over Belarus's airspace. The fighter jet forced the plane to land inside Belarus. And the 26-year-old they took off that plane was that young man who's the editor of Nexta. They arrested that young man on the tarmac, took him into custody in Belarus, He turned up in a forced confession video today, obviously under duress and bruised, confessing in weird technical language he's never used before to all the things that Lukashenko has charged him with. Absolutely terrifying to see it. 